So comedy. What is comedy? Comedy is extremely subject subjective. Not everyone finds the same things funny. Not everyone finds humor in same situations. For example, I'm a big lover of rom-coms, but not everyone finds them enjoyable. And I am a fan of dark humor as well, but also not everyone likes it. So instead of telling you guys what would be considered funny in your writing, I'm going to show you how to use comedy instead. And to effectively show you how to use them, I'm going to go on the different, the three theories of comedy or three theories of humor that uh, I learned earlier this year when I had to write a comedic script. And that's the superiority theory, relief, and incongruous juxtaposition. And believe me, I spent like 10 minutes yesterday trying to figure out how to pronounce that right. So yes, that's how you say it. And it is a stupid word. So what is the superiority theory? The superiority theory is that people will often find humor in situations that elevate themselves emotionally or morally, or not even morally, but just mentally speaking. For example, think of that, think of a bully in high school, how they would laugh when they shoved you in the locker or when they tossed your stuff in the dirt. They found that funny because it made their victim feel inferior and them feel superior. That is the kind of humor that belongs with superiority. It's also often used by narcissists and the fantasy noble that you might find in some books. Clear examples of these kind of things exist in shows like Downton Abbey or The Crown. Basically, think of any situation where you will have somebody who is very high in the political ladder for one reason or another, and they use that position to effectively treat people, um, to effectively treat people like crap. Um, now, how to use this in writing? Now, the point of this kind of humor is that it is not for your readers to find funny. If they do find it funny, that's their own issues. But the point of it is to highlight how despicable, bad, or out of touch that character is with the world around them. For example, if you write a story about how an entitled rich kid finds somebody uh, freaking out and digging at the mud because they dropped a piece of bread and they found that funny, I don't know how, but they did, that would show your readers how out of touch this person is. Because that person's not understanding that the beggar needs that piece of bread, the beggar needs that food. So it is entirely worth the beggar's time to pick up the food out of the mud. But to an entitled rich kid, they don't see the point. And so this kind of humor in writing will be used to highlight the negative aspects of a character. Any character you write that finds enjoyment using this kind of, let's just call it what it is, it's effectively abuse, then it kind of just shows your reader how, not just out of touch, but how warped that person's sense of what right or wrong are. By using this in a character, by using this not just with your antagonist, but using it just inside characters, it helps your reader establish that there is a disconnect in this world between the main characters, the villains, the civilians around them, all of that. There is a clear disconnect that they just don't seem to understand. Here's the, another thing you can use this humor for, not necessarily just to highlight traits of a secondary character, but you can also use it to highlight positive traits in your main characters by showing how they react to it. If not just with disgust, but with like a physical or visceral reaction, like helping the person that's being made fun of or shoving the person that's laughing, that immediately tells the reader what kind of person your protagonist is. If they do nothing and just watch, but silently see, that also tells them. 
This kind of humor is perfect for the show and don't tell when it comes to characterization because it tells you more about the character's inner workings than if you just stamped a label on their head. Now, are there any uh, questions about this or can we go on to the next one? So yeah, uh, just please know while I'm in full screen, it won't always show me the hands and everything. So just motion it in chat if you have a question or just type out the question in chat and I'll try to answer it, okay? So the next one is the relief theory. The relief theory of humor is that, suggests that we laugh as a way to dispel negative energy. That by laughing, we are able to release the tension in our bodies and allow ourselves to focus on the task at hand. It's kind of the reason why if your siblings or friends tickled due to near death, you found it difficult to control your limbs. Is that because that they're constantly tensing and relaxing so often that it's hard to move them around. In a tense situation like this, it's easier to just keep it subtle, especially when um, if you are the type of author to build tension. Because if you use some this kind of comedy, then it's specifically designed to give a sense of relief towards your characters, essentially allowing them to just relax and breathe out all that anxiety. An example I like to use to this is Discovery Pleasant novels, because the main character is sarcastic as heck, and his sarcasm is hilarious to me. Every time it's a high stress situation, he'll say something sarcastic and it will immediately diffuse it. I mean, even if it's still life or death and the characters don't know whether or not they're going to die, that little bit of stress relief really helps, how do I put this? It stops the kettle from boiling over, if you get what I mean. It stops that stress and that tension from getting too high by simply keeping it, by keeping it at a manageable level. Now, how to write it, you can easily, and I would honestly suggest just making a character that uses humor as a defense mechanism. It's really easy to see, it's really easy to write, and it's also really easy to show development as well, especially at the type of jokes that they use. Uh, the biggest issue that comes from this is that you need to make sure that the tension isn't so bad that it makes no sense should a character like this make a joke? Like, don't make a joke at a funeral. Don't make a joke where it's like you're on a battlefield surrounded by the de your dead comrades, that kind of stuff. Don't. It's not only is it the wrong time, but it kind of gives the reader a mixed message. Instead, create, instead slowly build up to those scenarios. And the best part about this stuff is that should the characters feel like they are in danger? So the characters feel like everything is about to go really wrong. And you have such a character that diffuses this kind of tension. It's helpful and it's needed because it diffuses the tension in the reader. It allows the reader to remind themselves that they are reading a novel, that they are reading a situation that they are not physically in. And it keeps them immersed enough that they don't completely lose it if something goes wrong. It's like a nice way to effectively remind them of the fourth wall, if that makes sense. Any questions? The um, next thing I want to go on is incongruous juxtaposition. That nine syllable, 100 buck word, is essentially a really, really annoying way of saying that the realization of an ironic situation Effectively, it's when your characters instead realize either the irony or the exact situation they're in, or they find the humor in the situation they're in. What's different about it is that it's kind of like, oh, how do I put this? Think of that condition all humans have where we can find a face in anything just by putting three dots on it. It's a similar thing with this. The example I used here is to think of a cup. 
something that at the midway point says half empty or half full. The humor in that kind of object is that no matter how much you fill it up, once it reaches that halfway point, you could call it either or. And that's just the basic humor. And it's a similar thing you can do with, um, with um, writing. I wasn't able to find a solid piece of writing personally that explains this properly, but this is the best um, I could figure out. Um, ah, typos, see, that's the position. <laughs> it is honestly the most straightforward in that you just had to create an unintentionally comedic situation. A fact of, I don't mean like unintentional in terms of, cause you're writing it. You obviously intended it to be that way. What I mean is it's unintentional for the reader. Find a situation that someone finds the comedy in or that the main character just notices how silly something is. For example, laughing at the fact that they're in a zombie apocalypse and it's the first time that they found a zombie that isn't immediately trying to kill them or something. I don't know. I don't watch The Walking Dead, but you get the idea. A really easy way to use this though is to use some like sitcoms and stuff like that as a reference. Because the juxtaposition for there is that they're making they're taking humor out of everyday situations. They're finding the laughter in something that could happen to anyone. That is the kind of thing you can use. And when I was writing scripts and stuff for comedy. The easiest thing for me to do was literally just binge watch a few episodes of one of these shows and I was able to figure out juxtaposition. So yeah, that is my best suggestion for you. If you're gonna use these kind of situations, then make sure that they are present in the whole book if you want to, or graphic novel, however you want to create your writing. And yeah. So what else is there? Well, there are some other things you should know. Humor in its own definition is effectively making light of a situation. It's allowing you to find the positive of a bad situation. Somebody steps on a rake head and slaps himself in the face, slapstick, it's funny. Somebody makes a pun out of another person's name or a very important object, still funny. But the point of humor is that it can also be used in different ways. And one of the most important ways I think is when humor is taken away. Because when you have your comic relief character or your lighthearted adventure style journey suddenly come to a screeching halt because they found, I don't know, the disembodied head of their favorite pet, or they come home one day and the very bad guys they just thwarted are in their house. Effectively removing that safety net of humor, removing that security from the reader allows for really good tone shift. Makes it, makes the reader suddenly latch on and realize, oh crud, things are going downhill. Because the thing is with humor is that it is meant to lift you. It's meant to lift you up and make you feel happy and elated like you're on cloud nine. The moment that's taken away, you start falling. And that's how bad it can get. My favorite use of this that I will refer to to the day I blind or die is in the movie Milan, the good one. Now the whole movie itself is a mixed bag of emotions. But in this scene particularly, they're just singing a satire of what they look for in the perfect woman. And while I will admit that it's misogynistic as heck, that was the point. The whole thing is just a satire on it. But where the tone shift comes in is that this is the last song in the movie that they sing. Up until now, it's been a regular Disney movie, singing, dancing, lighthearted, all these bright colors and tones. And then death. 
the burned remains of a village, the burned remains of an entire army. And that is it. Last song in the movie, the last joy, overly joyous thing we are given is cut short. And that is how you use it. That is how you can use comedy. You give your readers, a, like I said, a sense of security. So when you take it away in a scene like this, it emphasizes the importance of that scene. It really like drills in the point that they are in a war or that they are not in a situation that is normal, that is part of the norm. And how your characters react to this also shows how your reader will react. In this scene in particular, the soldiers are silent. It's like a full minute where there's no dialogue whatsoever. Heck, probably even longer. I haven't really timed it. Because, you know, once I start watching the movie, I'm, once I start watching the movie, I'm not going to stop until the end and then I'm going to replay Make a Man Out of You over and over. You know, just regular things. But the point is that in a scene like this, when you are writing it, instead of just showing it, the easiest thing to do is just to be, is just to describe how this hits your characters. Not by saying, oh, my character is not really sad. No. Show how this tone shift affects them. Explain the fear. Explain the, adre- the feeling of adrenaline, the sensation of that shock, building them and blinding them to everything else as they slowly take in what's going on. What that does is that it allows your reader to understand this is where your novel changes. This is where the tone shifts from being lighthearted and comedic all the time for comp to being serious and for the tone to now take a massive dive. Don't make it gradual because then it's kind of just like what I said earlier about building tension. With this kind of thing, you need to sweep the rug from under their feet. You need to make it jarring and quick so that it's clear, so you can get the emotions and reactions that you need. Now, one thing I learned, one thing I realized while making these prompts is that you cannot, oh gosh, yeah, you cannot. I cannot honestly in all good conscience and everything say, I want you to write this scene out. I want you to write that scene out because while I may find it funny, you guys may not. Comedy is subjective. So instead, I want to focus on something else. And I know this is a bit of a short session, but it's just the fact that uh, with comedy, it's not a genre. It's not a full it's not a full-on massive piece of writing. There are more books out there without comedy than there are with comedy. So instead, I want you to think about this. Think of a situation you've experienced. Either something that you've watched happen or you've experienced yourself and look back on that and think about how that situation, which falls within the theories of comedy that we explained makes you feel now. Think about a situation with, if you were bullied and you're happy to share, about how a bully laughed at somebody and how that made you feel when you saw that. Think about a situation where you and your family, something bad happened, something bad happened, but you found the humor in it. And think about that. For example, one memory I have with my family is that we went hiking once and we got lost because no one bothered to get a map. We were lost for about a full hour and we all knew it, but no one wanted to admit it. And where we find the comedy in that is that the one thing that we all could agree on, because we couldn't agree on direction or time or anything, was that the only reason we got out of that situation was because someone brought a compass. And that same someone had remembered 
what direct what cardinal direction the campus was. So we find laughter in the fact that we were all so stubborn, except for that one member of the family who's just like, I'm going to bring a compass, occur, despite what everyone says. And that's where we find the humor. So think of a situation in your past where you can find that humor. And if you're willing to share it, if you're willing to describe how that would work in a, cat, in a novel, please share, please do so. I really encourage it and I'd like to hear from you guys. Um, I do have other more engaging stories that I'm gonna share, but like for the next 10 minutes or so, because I don't think we need a full 15 to remember these things, just think on that. If you want to write about it, and even if it's not to share, but just so that you can properly analyze and look at this and think to yourself, how did this affect the different people in there? How did this humor, how did this comedic situation affect me now that I look back at it? Um, me back at 10 minutes. Okay, that's been about 10 minutes. Does anyone have anything they want to share on this? Oh, there we go. I don't mind if I read this aloud. When I was on seven, my parents bought home two rabbits, and my brother and I adored them. We returned from school one day and couldn't find them. Turns out, uh, turns out our uncle had set them for dinner. He used to say we refused to eat and cried all night. Oy. As I bit into my fourth rabbit that year, marinated and barbecued by my own hands. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, that's the humor. There we go. There we go. I believe, I believe that is the, um, <laughs> that's the embodiment of the meme. You got me in the first half, not going to lie. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. That's it. That's not, that was, that was clever. That was really clever, Mark. Nicely done. <laughs> Oh man, I'm a sucker for dark humor. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. Does anyone have anything else? <laughs> oh my gosh. I cannot believe that. Oh, that's just great. That's just great. Anyone have anything else they want to share? Um, I kind of hope you guys enjoyed that bit of comedy. Um, sorry it wasn't as long as the other things, but like I said, comedy is a it's a part of writing in general. It's not necessarily as big as a genre. So there isn't that much to get into it past the theories. Um, I really hope you guys did hope I enjoy it. And thank you, Mark, because that was an excellent example of incongruent juxtaposition. Excellent example. And so, yeah, I really hope you guys actually managed to learn a bit from my babbling. And I really hope that you all have a good time. Uh, we will see you guys uh, next week, I believe, for another session. I um, can't remember what that one's on. And yeah, I hope you all had a really good time and good luck with any assignments and stuff in this semester. We're almost at the finish line, people. We're getting close to it. Night.